Previously on Bleach, Ishin was the previous captain of Squad 10. His lieutenant was Rangiku, and third seat was Toshiro Hitsugaya. Masaki was a Quincy and also a member of the Kurosaki family who's currently living with the Ishida family. Ryukin is also living there and is supposed to have an arranged marriage with Masaki to save the pure Quincy bloodline. Katagiri, a maid there, is also taking interest in Ryukin, who is most likely Uryu's mother. An unknown hall that looks exactly like Ichigo's hollow form attacks that Ishin gets the shit kicked out of him by it. Masaki shows up, saves him, gets the hollow infused in her soul. Ishin and Ryukin then meet Ohara, who states that the only way to save Masaki is to have Ishin and Masaki's soul being connected to suppress the hollow's energy, which will result in Ishin losing his Shinigami powers. There, what was that? Like, five crucial plot points that the entire fandom's been wanting to know for years, and I just answered in, what was that, like, 30 seconds? Live in La Vida Bleach, right? I can't speak Spanish, so I don't know what the hell I just said. Go to the intro! <laughs> Everybody, Techie 101 here, back from a two-week break. Finals are over. I'm done. I can do whatever I want, and I'm here talking about Japanese comics. Wouldn't have it any other way. Okay, so chapter starts off from last chapter. Kind of surprised by that, you know? They had that epic finish last chapter with your knight in shining armor has arrived, so I figured, you know, they were just going to cut back to Ishin talking to Ichigo. I didn't think they were actually going to continue with the whole, you know, in the middle of the soul discussion. But anyway, uh, Ishin talks to the hollow face, visage, you know, virus, whatever the hell the thing is. Hey, hollow, now that I'm here, I won't let you lay a finger on her, even though you don't have any fingers. And there, Hollow, that's my signature technique, the Getsuga Ten Show. It will never get old. Ever. After Ishin smashes the Hollow's, um, soul face, or whatever the hell that thing was, uh, Misaki becomes aware of her surroundings and asks him, like, Oh, wait, you were that Shinigami I saved the other night. Did you get in trouble? What's up? What's going on? And, oh, wow, okay. I know, I know I'm becoming kind of a pervert here, but in this one panel, you can, like, basically see Misaki's bare chest. That's, that's kind of, that's kind of revealing, I don't know. So anyway, scrolling down, we see, oh, sweet chesticles. Uh, uh, that, that's Misaki naked. Damn! Ugh. Ugh. Did I get punched in my sleep again? Oh, right, that. Huh. Um. Damn. Uh. I. How can I make this funny? It's, it's right there. It's, 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 they stare at you, you know? Okay, taking away the fact that if the Bleach anime does come back, I don't know how the hell they're going to animate that. Maybe they'll have like a blur over it, or maybe they'll like, I, I don't know what the hell. The thing that I'm concerned more about, though, is the fact that, look at the other big three. I mean, out of the big three, probably the one that shows the most fan service is probably One Piece. And even One Piece never goes that far, so I don't know what the hell was going through Kubo's head. Like, like I don't even know how, like, like, like how did that meeting even go? It's just like, it's like, hey guys, so uh, I'm working on Bleach 536, and uh, I was thinking, you know, um, maybe uh, I could, you know how Masaki was, like, partially naked last chapter? I was hoping, like, I could show, like, her full naked, like, boobs, like, right, like, right there, like, all, all out in the open. Um, okay, I, I don't think that would really be, um... Uh, I mean, it's a, it's a teenage magazine. I don't like. Oh, I know, I know, I know, I know. But it's like, I mean, it's 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 like it's like they're right there, you know, just like s like staring at you. Okay. Um. Look, you really can't do that. I'm I'm sorry. You we have to put our foot down. I'm like, you're gonna do it anyway, aren't you? Yeah, probably. Oh god. Okay. At least, okay. At least, uh, like, omit the nipples a little bit so it doesn't look, you know, that bad. No promises. Oh god. <sighs> Okay, so just to wrap it up, uh, y y you know how people always ask what the main difference between men and women are? 
I can tell you right now that without a shadow of a doubt, I could spend the remaining 15 minute runtime of this review simply talking about this one panel and just analyzing every single damn line of it and analyzing what Kubo was doing and what he was trying to speak to us about. And I, I don't think a woman would be obsessed with it that much. Um, that, I think that is a crucial difference there. So I'm just going to move on and I'm going to say that one more thing added to this is that you should not have shown this picture immediately following this picture. Kind of sends the wrong signal right there. Now I could add some funny sound effects over her face there, but personally I think I bled the joke dry. Yes, she's naked. Yes, they're right there. I don't know why Kubo did it. Maybe he's having marital issues and this is how he's venting it. I don't know. All I can guarantee you are two things. Number one, there's probably going to be a lot of discussion, and I know what's going to everyone, every manga reviewer on YouTube is going to be talking about today that talks about bleach. And secondly, I got myself a kick-ass thumbnail. Awesome thing that also probably every single other reviewer is probably going to use today. But moving on. Urahara does the victory sign and states that she's safe now and the procedure was successful. We have a little more banter of Misaki being unconscious and having the discussion or whatever she thinks is going on in her soul right now. Also, this expression that Urahara is showing is not really helping my case much. Now, and uh, we get the title of the chapter, Everything But The Rain, OP9, June Truth. Kind of sounds like a 70s rock band. Uh, we have Ryukin walking home from the Uehara shop, and he runs into Katagiri along the way. He kind of gives her the abridged version of what's going on with Masaki, but of course he leaves out all the crucial points. Katagiri states that this is the reason that she's there is to protect all of them, ever since they were children. We have a flashback of when they met, and she states that seeing him so sad breaks her heart. And then she cries, because we never see Katagiri cry. That's basically her only character. If she had an action figure, the action figure would be crying. Actually, I'm not a Japanese buff or anything, but um, I'm like in terms of the language, does Katagiri make any reference to crying or water or tears? Because that has to be relatable to her character somehow, because that's how we always see her. I was also expecting, you know, like Ryukin to turn around and like grab her and like hold her in her arms. It's like, I don't like to see you sad either. And so we could have maybe a little bit of a bridging between the two because it's very clear that she's probably going to be Uryu's mother. So it's just interesting that there'd be something, but no, it's just, let's go home. I'm like, oh, she stops crying all of a sudden. Whatever. I don't know. Maybe they go back home and get it on all night. I don't freaking know. Anyway, so we cut back uh, to a, like a brief overview of the following years. I guess Ishin got tired of explaining the entire flashback, so we decided just to speed through it. Uh, so after that, uh, Masaki left the Ishida family after she graduated uh, high school. Uh, Ryukin was the one that went on and decided that it's probably best to resolve uh, the matter with... Um, Masaki on his part, it was because Ryukin did that. Uh, once again, the Ishida family didn't really resist that because they knew that Misaki's impure now, so basically they probably did. This is going to be kind of mean, but given the fact that we've seen how Uri, uh, Ryukin's mother acts, I don't think they would really be that torn up about throwing, you know, Misaki out just because she's not uh, uh, pure anymore. Man, think. Okay, we have a chapter featuring uh, Misaki you know, naked, and then I'm talking about her not being pure anymore. This is getting very dirty, I'm just saying. I, I, I don't feel very comfortable up here. Not to mention the fact I have to do the entire review with this thing staring me in the face. You're gonna be in my nightmares tonight. Hey, so I bet you guys are all wondering exactly how Ishin started up the Kurosaki Clinic. After all, he's a Shinigami. He knows nothing about Earth medicine. How would he know how to do any of that? Well, of course, in this chapter we are revealed in a whole one panel. Yeah. Uh, basically, he states that he studied medicine in the, uh, the Ryujutsu Academy, the only thing he was good at and uh, decided to open up a small clinic. Of course, there were still many things he didn't learn, but with Uohara's help, somehow everything worked out. Yeah, right there, Kubo, right there. Somehow everything worked out. That's right, that, that, that basically attributes you to, I couldn't think of a good reason why he's in a clinic, so I'm just gonna throw in this very brief panel. I mean, the thing that I'm humorous about is, the fact, okay, not even speaking the fact that, okay, I, I never even knew that the, 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 um, the Shinigami really used medicine all that much. I mean, they have healing keto. I mean, I, I know they can get diseases because of Ukitake and, and uh, you know, Tozen was blind, so of course there are diseases in the in the Soul Society, but th they, they probably work a completely different way than they do in the world of the living. I doubt there's, like, standard microbial bacteria and viruses living in the Soul Society. Like, wouldn't that be weird if, like, 
when bacteria dies in the human world, it goes into the soul society as like soul bacteria or ghost bacteria, and then it affects you. Now, oh, you got ghost tuberculosis. I'm like, okay, whatever. Ghost mitosis, ghost meiosis, whatever the hell. I'm, I, I'm a biology nerd. Anyway, um, it's, just, it's just interesting they even threw that in there. But what's even more interesting is the fact that, like, what would happen if, like someone were to come to the Kurosaki clinic and be like, he's like, I think I have cancer. I'm like, oh, it's okay, take this medicine. Hey, I'm all better now. How did you do that? I'm like, oh, well, I just, medicine, I, I, I just learned it from somewhere. Um, that'll be what, like 10 bucks? We get, a fr uh, we get a brief cover of uh, exactly what Masaki and Ishin's uh, relationship were when she was in college. I guess they dated. So here's the thing about this chapter. He doesn't expressly say anything concrete like, I fell in love with Masaki over time. I mean, it's alluded to, but it's never directly said. I mean, if Kubo were to throw in a line or something that said, you know, like, he's like, at first I did it just to save her life because she saved mine, but over time I grew to love her or something, that would be a little bit more emotional because that's what we all like to say as a fandom, you know, like Masaki and Ishii, and, uh, you know, and um, Masaki split off from their separate, uh, you know, families or organizations because they loved each other. That's what we all want to do, but uh, apparently that's just not the case. Apparently it was just an act of, she saved me, I'll save her, and I'll just stay her by her side because that's how it is. Uh, the closest thing we get to, you know, him expressing her love, um, you know, the closest thing we get for him expressing his love for Misaki was how uh, they went to go see a romance movie one night, and the uh, the man in the movie stated that the woman was the center of her universe, uh, and she and he uh, Ishin basically related this to Misaki, how she was the center of his universe, and we, this has actually been compared to before that Misaki was the center of the family's universe. That's that this I guess the image has actually been seen before, but now it's just with Ishin. Um, so finally, we cut back to the present, and then. You were born. Weren't we outside when this flashback started? Yeah, never mind that. Anyway, uh, after that, you pretty much know everything after you're born. Right, of course. I mean, I have the baby book right here in case you want to look at it. No, that's that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> oh, look. You're so cute. Look at you wielding your babies on Getsu. <laughs> that was so adorable. What? Nothing. Anyway, uh, so yeah, uh, you met Rukia. That awakened your Shinigami powers. You fought against uh, Urahara and his training, and that awakened your Zanpak Toe. Went to the Soul Society, and you awakened your Hollow, and uh, I could no longer contain it. Therefore, the link was broken, and BAM! That's how I got my Shinigami powers back. Uh, it's not expressly stated, but I'm assuming that the connection that Ishin had with Masaki with suppressing the Riatsu also, I guess, carried over to Ichigo. Um, now, that's that's kind of like a big jump right there. Like, I'll, like one second, it's like, I'm standing by your mother, protecting her with th th this connection I have between her and me. And then all of a sudden, it's like, oh, I had this connection between you and me now, Ichigo, and like father and son. Um, I, would, I would probe the hell out of this, if not for what happens next. Ishin states that there's still one more thing he needs to tell his son. That nine years ago today, June 17th, when your mother died. Because I'm going to tell you the real reason your mother died that day. So I'm assuming that when next chapter happens and we get another flashback of when uh, Masaki met Grand Fisher. We don't even know. Well, okay, Grand Fisher will probably be involved, but we don't know the exact circumstances. Something with that circumstance is going to have... Uh, Misaki transfer the link over to Ishin or something like that because it was stated I forgot to mention that but Ishin did indeed inform Misaki about uh, the, the link so she knew about it so something could have happened like along the lines of I don't know Misaki was about to die and said pass the link on to my son or whatever also little bit of a continuity glitch that I discovered um okay so it's always been common belief that Misaki died when Ichigo was nine years old now Way, way back at the beginning of the series, when they went to the cemetery to see Masaki's grave, and I believe this is only in the manga, when looking over Masaki's grave, Ishin states it's already been 10 years since Masaki died, to which Ichigo responds, who was 15 at the time, no, it was only 6 years, and they get kind of into a comedy argument about this, like, how do you even know your own wife's, you know, the day your own wife died? Now, at the moment, this could have just been a comedy, you know, sketch or whatever. But now, knowing what we know, it's very interesting because from Ishin's perspective, from that chapter, she died when Ichigo was five, and from Ichigo's perspective, she died when he was nine. I stated before that it's possible that Ichigo repressed a lot of these memories. After all, your mom dying in front of you at the age of five or nine, whichever, you're going to repress some stuff. Um, but then we get this chapter that kind of punches a hole in both of those and is like, oh, it happened nine years ago. All right, well, let's look at it this way. Ichigo was 15 at the beginning of the series, so that would be six years in the past when Misaki died. Now, we've had not only the time skip, but we also had from the Soul Society arc to the Hueco Mundo arc and Fake Carl Shortown arc, that took up time. We don't know how much time took place between the Fulbring arc and this arc. 
I'm, okay, I'm just going to say an even two years. I'm just going to say, I, I know we learned that in the last arc it was 17 months. Let's just say it was two years even. Let's just say it was even 24 months. It was probably a little bit less than that, but let's just go with that. Two years later, Ichigo is 17. So, therefore, it would be eight years. This is, see, so Ishin is still stating that it's, a, it's at a time uh, earlier than what Ichigo remembers, but it's not the same time than he stated back at the cemetery. He should be saying 11 or 12 years. That should be something closer. Um, so I don't know about that. Um, I'm sure the time frame is going to fit into it, but I'm sure it's probably just going to be on the on the nine years now, not the ten, uh, or something with that. I don't know. Uh, so anyway, yeah, that was... Um, that was that. Bleach chapter 536. Uh, you know, interesting. I, I thought, you know, I, I believe the chapter was, was going to have the flashback ending. I, I kind of knew that was going to happen. Um, but at the same time, I'm really glad the way they handled it. The, 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 the Masaki thing was weird. But hey, it gave me something to talk about. At least I don't have to worry about my review getting boring. Let me tell you that much. Cycling through the chapter this morning, I'm like, okay, yeah. Yeah, I know what I can do here. I'm going to throw a blood, bloody nose gag in here somewhere. I can make it happen. So, uh, yeah, so next chapter is probably going to be, you know, explaining exactly what happened with Grand Fisher and all that crap. Um, you know, from what we've seen, Masaki still has her Quincy powers. I mean, each, I mean, Ishin doesn't have his Shinigami powers anymore, but from, uh, Ishin's, I mean, from Masaki's perspective, we actually, no one's ever actually see, uh, said expressly that Masaki lost her Quincy powers. It's just been, you know, vaguely alluded to. So maybe she still has them, for all we know, and just doesn't use them just for the sake of, you know, protecting, you know, whoever or not revealing them, like, her identity or whatever. Also, we never really understood the exact reason why, like, when, um, you know, Rukia, Rangiku, and everybody show up at Ichigo's house in the Soul Society, I mean, in the Arankar arc, nobody recognizes this shit. Uh, some people were saying, like, the Soul Society, like, um, wiped their minds, because here's the thing. Uh, yeah, Urahara going missing in the world of the living, Ishin going missing in the world of the living. Do you really think it would be that difficult for the Soul Society, this massive, you know, society that, you know, specializes in the soul cycling between the worlds? Do you think it would be completely impossible for them to detect Ishin and, and Urahara in the world of the living, even though they all live in the visors, too, when they all live in the same town. That's also, like, the reishi hotspot of the human world. I mean, I think even Urahara, I think, I think even Yamamoto at one point during the fake Karakura Town arc even stated he knew that Urahara was in the world of the living. He just didn't do anything about it. So, um, I don't know what they told everyone. Like, oh, yeah, my captain just, he went to the world of the living and just disappeared. Um... Yeah, and, and, they, and then they just forgot about him, and that's why they didn't recognize him. And I, I know you can all say, like, oh, well, when they were at Ichigo's house, they didn't actually see Ishin. I'm like, yeah, okay, that's, that's a little bit of a cop-out, I think. Uh, just a little bit, but whatever. Uh, that's chapter one. Thanks for watching. Bleach chapter number 536. See you next time, guys. Techie 101 back. Whatever I say. Signing out. <laughs>